Nine tips for international students moving to the UK. If you are an international student coming to the UK to the study from the European or somewhere further afield, we get that it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if it's your first time at university. Recent studies show that the majority of overseas students are undergraduates, so there is a good chance this is you. From visas and tuition fees to healthcare insurance and bank accounts. There's a lot of international students to consider about students' life in the UK. So we have broken it down in this step-by-step -step guide. Plan your funding and research scholarship. Our first point of advice for international students in the UK is that you need to make sure you have the finance to fund your degree. The funding available for your depends on where you are in the world and the date you enroll at UN. Previously, students were from the European Union, the European Economic Area and Switzerland were able to access student finance the same way UK students can. And then Brexit happened, European students, the students from the EEA and Swiss students from the academic year 2021-22 onwards. EU and EEA students are considered overseas students. This means that unless individual universities decide to set their own fees for European students, new not continuing EU or EEA students who started university in the UK on 1st August 2021 or later must pay the same fees that students coming from outside Europe do. Students from outside Europe coming to the UK students from outside the Europe, apart from in certain specific circumstances, have never been eligible for student finance in the UK. No matter when you started your degree, you will have to fund your degree yourself and you will often have to pay fees much higher than what UK students pay. Anything from Euro 10,000 to Euro 35,000 a year. Don't forget that for your visa application to be successful, you will need to provide evidence that you can cover this cost as well as your living expenses. If you don't have the money to pay for yourself, there are options available. In our guide to international students funding and scholarships, we cover lots of opportunities that you might be eligible for. And you could also look into educational loan or exchange programs. For more information on how much tuition fees cost for international students in the UK and eligible criteria for UK student finance, Check our guide to tuition fees for international students. Organize your student visa. As an international student coming to the UK, you might need to apply for a visa depending on which country you are from European students. Students from the EEA and Swiss students on 1st January 2021. Things changed for students from European, the EEA and Switzerland coming to the UK. Until 31st December 2020, these students didn't need a visa to live and study in the UK. If you were living in the UK before 31st December 2020, you should have been able to apply to the EU settlement scheme which allow you to work, study and access benefits and services broadly on the same basis as you could prior to Brexit. If you moved to the UK after 31st December 2020, you will now need to use the following information on student visas. Students from outside Europe coming to the UK. If you are from a country outside the Europe and the EEA, excluding Switzerland, you have always needed to apply for a visa to study in the UK. If you will be studying in the UK for less than six months, you will need a standard visitor visa. Note that you cannot work in the UK if you have this visa, unless it's an elective, that is, an optional placement as a part of medicine, dentistry, or veterinary medicine courses. If you want to work during your stay, you will need to apply for a student visa. You can also apply for a short-term study visa if your course is between 6 and 11 months but no longer. If you are 16 or over and you will be studying an English language course, crucially, this means a course where you will be learning about the English language. Not just a course that's taught by lectures speaking English. Standard visitors visas cost $95 and short-term study visas cost $186. Student visas, if your course lasts for longer than six months, 
or less than six months but you want to work, you will need a student visa which has replaced the TIA4 student visa. These are some of the documents you will need for your student visa confirmation of acceptance of studies. This is a 14 digit reference number you will receive from your university once you accept your offer. Proof of finances, you will need to prove that you have enough money to pay for your first year of tuition fees. On the top of this, you need to prove you have Euro 1023, that is Euro 1334, those studying in London per month for up to nine months to cover your living expenses. This can either be through self-funding and official sponsorship or an education loan. English learning skills, you have to have proof you meet the minimum level of English language proficiency. Usually by taking a secure English language test, the student visas cost Euro 348. If you are applying from outside the UK or Euro 475, if you are already in the UK and want to extend or switch to this visa, you may also have to pay a healthcare surcharge as part of your visa application. This costs 235 for 6 months or $1.470 for the whole year and you will allow you to use the NHS. If you are applying for a student visa from outside the UK, you can apply up to 6 months before you start your course while you have just 3 months if you are applying from inside the UK and you must apply before your current visa expires. Although you could get a response within a few weeks, it's the best to apply as soon as possible to make sure. Prepare for British life. Culturally, the UK is very diverse and welcoming of people from all over the world. You will find plenty of other international students at all universities and most will have societies to help you meet like-minded people and those from the similar backgrounds. We would also recommend searching for Facebook groups related to your university. They often have groups specifically for international students in the UK. So you can discuss any questions you have and even make some friends before you arrive in case you weren't already aware. The UK is known for its cold and wet weather. Pack lots of warm clothes and waterproof coat for the winter months and don't accept summer to be very hot very often. It's not student budget or environmentally friendly to have a heating on all the time either although we have tricks to help you save on your energy bills so warm clothes are essential sort your student accommodation you will want to get your accommodation sorted before you land in the uk the last thing you want to turn up and have nowhere to stay you first port of call should be your university itself as they will often offer guarantees to house all students who apply before a certain date. Most students either live in university accommodation called halls of residence or halls for short or rent a room from a private landlord. Living in halls is the best for your first year of study as it removes the hassle of trying to find a suitable room elsewhere. And some universities even have halls specially for international students to help you make friends easily. This will either be self-catered, meaning you will have access to shared kitchen to cook your own meals, or catered, meaning your meals will be provided at a canteen. If you are looking to save some money, self-catered by far the cheaper option. And we have lots of students recipes and even a student meal plan to help you develop your culinary skills. Unlike American universities, the vast majority of rooms both in halls and private housing are single occupancy, meaning you won't have a roommate but a room to yourself instead if you are not interested in halls and you had to prefer to do the accommodation hunt yourself. Head to our student letting agents directory to hunt houses in your university area and consult our guide to viewing student houses so you know what to watch out for. And of course, if you are not sure where you like to live, check out our guide comparing student halls and student houses. Make sure you have got health insurance. All international students from both inside and outside the EU will need to prove they have health insurance to cover them for any health care they need while in the UK. 
Here's how it's done. EU students, students from the EEA and Swiss students. If you are from the EU, the EEA or Switzerland and you come to the UK before 31st December 2020, you will need a European Health Insurance Card, EHIC. This will entitle you to free of reduced health care from the National Health Service while you are here in UK. If you don't have one, it is as simple as applying for one through your home country's National Health Health insurance provider. You will still be able to access health care using your EHIC if you are an EU national who was living in the UK before the end of 2020. However, you should have applied the EU settlement scheme EUSS to protect your right to free health care in the UK. If you are from the EU and started living in the UK after 31st December 2020, the following information now applies to you instead students from outside Europe coming to the UK. If you are a student from a country outside the EU, EEA or Switzerland, you will have to pay the health surcharge mentioned above as part of your visa application, giving you access to the NHS during your stay here also check any health insurance you already have as that may also cover you while you are abroad. However, don't forget that neither the EHIC or health surcharge will cover any extra expenses or losses incurred as a result of illness or injury, cancelled travel plans or lost course fees. For example, in slight offers travel insurance for international students coming to the UK which will cover these extra expenses. Set up a student bank account. If you are staying in the UK for longer than few months, so longer than a semester, we would recommend setting up a bank account. This will make it easier to pay bills, keep your money safe and avoid foreign currency charges you had otherwise be paying if you used a non-UK account to pay for things in Britain. Setting up a bank account can be a lengthy process as banks will need lots of information to verify your identity and credit rating. Check whether you are able to get the ball rolling from your home country to save time and look into whether your current bank has any links to UK banks as this will likely make the process smoother. Student bank accounts are a great option as they offer numerous benefits including an interest free overdraft of up to 3000 euro. However, it's worth knowing that not all banks offer student bank accounts to international students. Instead, it's worth checking out our guide to the best UK international student bank accounts and use our list as a starting point to find an account that best suits you. Since it can take a while to get a bank account set up and around 10 days for your debit card to arrive, it's best to take money with you to cover the first month of your stay. We had recommend a prepaid card for this as carrying large amount of cash can be unsafe. Work out the cheapest way to make international calls. If you are panicking about whether your current phone will work in the UK, the answer is most likely yes. There are two types of cellular frequencies that exist around the world the GSM band and the CDMA band. The UK operates on the same GSM band, the most popular as most of the world. But if you are coming from Japan or North or South America, your phone may not work in the UK. So this is worth checking. If your phone only supports the CDMA band, there is also a chance it may not work in the UK. If your phone doesn't look like it work here, it might be worth selling it for cash and buying a new one. However, the worst thing you can do is keep your current SIM card in your phone while studying in the UK. You will pay extremely high charges for calling internationally. As well as local numbers, here are our top tips for keeping connected on the cheap. Save money calling local numbers. If you already have a mobile phone, then you will need a SIM card with a pay as you go. SIM, you will need to top up your phone with credit, which is a good way of keeping track of your spending, but can be hassle if your credit runs out at an awkward time. Monthly contracts are usually better value for money, as you will likely get unlimited or close to minutes and text. What's more, you can now get one month rolling contracts meaning you will never more than a week away from being able to cancel your commitment and move elsewhere. We have got a guide with all the best SIM only deals too. 
If you would like a new phone, check out our mobile comparison tool to get a great deal that will have minutes, text and data bundled together for a low monthly price. You can even keep the phone when the contract finishes. Keep in mind that you may have to unlock your phone before you start using your new SIM card if you bought it back home. For calling back home in recent years, there have been lots of low-cost international call providers popping up such as Libra, Leica Mobile and Redtel. Alternatively, you can use services like Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, iOS only, Viber, Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp to have audio and video chats for free. Although these usually rely on you having a Wi-Fi or 3G, 4G, 5G connection. Figure out public transport. Getting to grips with the public transport system when you first land in a country can be a bit daunting. So here is the simple guide local travel. All cities will have a local bus service which is often the most convenient way of getting around. Assess out how far away you are going to be living from campus and whether it is worth investing in a student bus pass to some save some cash. Bigger cities might also have a subway system like the tube is in London or the metro in the Newcastle and you might be able to invest in yearly pass to help keep costs down. If you are confident enough, traveling by bike is a great way to save money while being environment friendly too. National travel, if you are in the UK for the first time, you will probably want to visit a few different cities and size while you are here. Your two main options here are coach or train. Trains are often the quickest and the most comfortable way to get around the UK. However, tickets should be booked as early as possible to save money. Check out our guide for saving our train fares. You will probably also want to invest in 16 to 25 rail cards, which will save you a third on all rail fares. Given how little they cost and how expensive tickets can be, you could make your money back in the savings on a single journey. Coaches are the cheaper alternative to trains, but they can take twice as long as to get from A to B. Our top pick for saving money, Megabus with journeys starting at Euro 1 between the major cities. Traveling by plane is also an option for traveling distances. For example, if you are traveling from London to Edinburgh, although it can be expensive, know how many hours you are allowed to work. If you want to make some extra cash while you are studying, then you may be wondering what your rights and options to work in the UK. With the student visa, you will be able to work up to 20 hours per week while studying and full time during the holidays. As well as before and after your course starts, although if you are from EU or EEA country or Switzerland and have since secured EU settled status, you are free to work as many hours as you wish and can continue working as long as you had like after graduation. However, you shouldn't rely on the part-time job as your main cause of income to find your living cost in the UK. While there is great way to boost your finances, you will unlikely be able to learn enough to live off and working long shifts can distract you from your studies. Try applying for an international student scholarship instead.